Let's get started, Motor Maven. I'm going to work on the street ride. Okay. You're watching Motorhead Garage, presented by AutoGeek.net. All right, Greg, so we've got everything all set now. We're ready to start measuring for this thing. Hey, folks, welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, what we're doing is we're getting ready to measure for our drive shaft. And I've got Greg Frick here from Inland Empire Drive Line to give us a few tips on what to do and how to do it right. Greg, what is the biggest mistake guys make when they're trying to get dimensions for a drive shaft when you make one for them? Engine, transmission, and rear end need to be in the chassis where they're going to stay and they have to be sitting the weight of the vehicle on the tires. So that's where we what that's what we have right now. We've got that set up. So we're ready to start doing our measurements now. Yep, let's do it. Okay, so the first step is where you measure. We first. need you to measure from the end of this transmission output shaft okay. to the center of that U joint, which is the flat surface. Right there? Right there, where the U bolt would go in. All right, we're looking at right at 33 inches. So we put that down, that's the... Write that what? down here as X. That's the X then measurement. we need to know how much of this spline is protruding beyond the seal. All right, so... We've... You got about a half inch, so you write that down as Y. Okay. Then we need the joint size at the pinion end, so there are tabs that center the U joint. If you measure in between those tabs, you'll right. get some distance. We're looking like about three and a, looks like about three and a quarter. Okay. Then measure the cap diameter, which is the seat that the U-joint is going to go into right up there at the flat surface. All right, we're looking at just about an inch. Okay, you will find the dimensions that you get listed on this sheet of paper. You just check whichever box matches whatever is in the car. Okay, so once you have those dimensions and you put those down, then you can send that in to you and you can make up a drive shaft for that. So that's it'll be correct. right. Okay, now I noticed this has tabs. Not all yokes have tabs. That's correct. Most vehicles will have this style of pinion yoke that have those tabs that center the U joint. Okay, so those have these little tabs right here, if you can see that. You know, turn it like that you so you can it. see that. Those are usually what, on the Ford rear ends? Ford, everybody uses them. However, Chrysler and GM have their own corporate parts as well, and there are no such tabs. Okay, yeah, I can see that's just straight across on that. So, so if you find that you have one of those in your project, you measure in between these ears on the machine surface, and again, you'll find on the drawing the dimensions that you get. Check the box, give us a call, we're ready to rock and Okay, roll. well, I've got that drive shaft here. Let me go get it. All right, folks, here it is. This is the drive shaft that Greg made up for us, and boy, what a nice piece of work you guys do out there. Now, tell me a little bit about this. I know it's all aluminum, but it looks like it's all been balanced, ready to go. That's right. This is the way they arrive. Uh, it's 6061 T6 tubing, 6061 T6 forgings. Balanced, put it in the car, cross it off your list. Well, let's put it in the car and cross it off our list. <laughs> let's put this in here. Now, one of the things that, uh, let me, turn this around here so we can slide this in. One of the tips that Greg gave me says when you slide this in like this, you need to have anywhere from just barely touching this yoke here to a, what, three-eighths of an inch? Yes, sir. And that'll give you the proper movement on this, right? That's right, proper because clearance. you're going to pull this back into the pinion yoke, and that's what gives this clearance at the transmission end so that the suspension can move and the shaft can slide freely back and forth. All right, so we got that in a nice fit on that. Now, another tip he gave me, and this is important, I never even thought about this, but that's on these U-bolts. U-bolts are used to hold most drive shafts to most pinion yokes, and almost everybody over tightens them. What you want is 17 foot-pounds on this. There's no way you're going to get a torque wrench back behind that pinion right. yoke. So you come down evenly on these nuts till the lock washer just flattens out. Then give him an eighth of a turn, and you're there. Now, the key on that is if you over torque it, beside the obvious, you're stretching the U-bolt and weakening that. But you're also causing some real pressure on that uh, bearing cap, too. That's correct. That's why the pinion joint always goes first, and it always goes on the pinion side. It's a self-inflicted injury. It's also the source for about 80% of drive shaft vibrations because you've got that operating through an angle and it will move, but it doesn't like it. 
Boy, that's some good information. Greg, thank you so much for stopping by. We'll get this thing all wrapped up. In the meantime, we got more coming at you on Motorhead Garage. We have that new boat. We might as well get these in and get it done.